This year, the Riverwalk turns 35. To celebrate, I took a look back at the history of our city's crown jewel. In 1981, the city was celebrating 150 years and wanted to gift itself with something to enjoy for generations to come, the Riverwalk. To get the project started, Harold Moser, builder of Crest Creek Country Club, held a breakfast. There's no such thing as a free breakfast. <laughs> And the idea was, uh, you people made a lot of money, contractors in Naperville, concrete people and electric, electricians, and, uh, and now it's time to perhaps give some back to the city. What can you do for the city? People got the idea that, uh, and they said, okay, I'll give you this and I'll give you that. So before you know it, we, we had enough to start construction. And that's what they did. Mayor Rabicki gave the team free reign to do as they pleased. There was just a small group of people that was... Jim Mosier and myself, uh, Bill Lewis from the city, uh, and Hal Dixon, and Larry Gregory. So there was five or six of us that were really the heart of the whole thing. And we had a meeting once a week. It's a beautiful way to do business. As word got around, people wanted to volunteer for what was quickly becoming a community project. Chuck's son, Bruce, remembers. I spent the whole summer laying bricks from the, uh, the section uh, just on the... Uh, uh, around the quarry, uh, basically is the walkway that goes between the concessions building and uh, Eagle Street, I, uh, I believe there. And so that was, uh, every time I walked down that stretch, I looked down and see all the bricks that I know that, uh, you know, I laid a good percentage of those bricks. So it's a great job, but we would have guys that would come out uh, during the day and they would just show up uh, to, to work, all the volunteers. The group worked to build what is known today as the centerpiece of our city taking inspiration from all over and making it unique to Naperville. From the covered bridges... The lumber was all donated by Jim Mosier, who didn't want anybody to know about it because he was a very shy guy and he didn't want people to feel like he was influencing it all. To the dandelion fountain, modeled after a famous French artist's work. There was a, an artist by the name of Harry Bertoya it looked nice and we thought it would be appropriate in that in that condition so as a result when you come off the uh, come off the bridge you'd like to have something to call your attention to it so it looks like a good spot for it and then so we lit it up and so that's how the dandelion fountain happened to be get built there combining inspiration vision and a volunteer spirit the group gave the city the gift of a lifetime